Good morning. morning. It's nice to see your faces. I wish I could see you smile, but we've all learned to be uh, quite expressive with our eyes. (laughs) I work in a mask all day, so it's uh, actually nice to be able to speak with you. I wanted to thank Lawrence for help with the technology today. For those of you who are joining us at home, welcome. I am not Reverend Phil, as you know. Reverend Phil actually is away today. He is doing the final service at MP Hill United. They're actually closing their doors and merging with their sister. So uh, he is the guest speaker there this evening, this this morning. So we have given him the opportunity to do that. So I have the privilege of worshiping with you today. Announcements. There are no announcements. Wow, that's good. Uh, Prayer requests for when we get to our prayer opportunity. Does anybody have specific requests that they would like to meet me to include? You can always say them silently if I don't have the opportunity. Um, feel free to say them aloud if you so wish. We'll start our service with a moment of silence to center ourselves before we light the Christ candle. As we light the Christ candle this morning, we are reminded that Christ is the light of the world, living within each of our hearts, representing Christ in this world, as we, as the disciples, interact with our community. In our statement of faith, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the call to worship. As the rains pour from heaven, soaking the earth that it may produce good things, so God pours us love upon us that we too may produce goodness and peace. We have been blessed with many gifts and talents. God desires that we use these gifts and talents for healing, peace, and hope. Come, let us worship and celebrate the mighty love and power of God. Praise be to God, who has blessed us in so many ways. Amen. In our opening prayer, let us pray. Lord, everywhere we look, we see the imprint of your creative love. The wondrous works of nature show your majesty. As we gather today to celebrate your love and creation, keep us mindful that we are part of the created order, meant to be stewards and not destroyers. Prepare us for work for you in ministries of peace and justice. Amen. Voices United, 296, this is God's wondrous world.
confession. Let us pray. We can get caught up in selfish pursuits and completely overlook the wonders of your creation, O God. All around us are majestic reminders of the beauty you offer to us, but we are weak and easily trapped into attitudes of indifference or destructive behavior. You have not given this world to us that we should destroy it, but rather that we should cherish it and make sure that all receive from its bounty. Forgive our overwhelming greed and selfishness. Help us to let go of the petty desires for wealth, position, and power, and bring us into a ministry which proclaims your love and justice for all people. These things we pray in the name of the Master, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And receive now the promise of forgiveness. God hears the cries of our hearts, sees our actions, and knows our attitudes. In the midst of our sinfulness, God reaches out to heal and forgive us. Receive the forgiveness which God has offered to you. Live in God's love. Amen. And prior to our scripture, our prayer of illumination. Living God, help us to hear your holy word, that we may truly understand, that we may believe, and in believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings today, we have two. One is from the New Testament, and the message today will be from the psalm. So I will start with Mark 10, 35 to 45. And I'm reading from the revised, New Revised Standard Version. So Mark 10, 35 to 45. James and John, the son of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I baptize with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to get angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among Gentiles, those who they recognize as their ruler Lord is over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his, ransom, his life a ransom for many." In Psalm 104, the lectionary guides us to the first nine verses of the psalm this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretched out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the water. You made the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You made the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with the garment. The water stood above the mountain. As you rebuke, they flee. At the sound of your thunder, they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down the valleys, 
to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. And our message this morning is based on Psalm 104, verses 1 to 9. Have you ever been asked, how do you know God exists? It's an excellent question, and a question that many of us would struggle to answer. There is no black and white answer to that question, nor is there a one-sentence answer. Many have been asking that question for thousands of years. How do I know God exists? I remember our oldest son coming home from elementary school, upset with a mark that he had obtained on his math test. The teacher had instructed the class to show their work and to provide details of how they came up with the answer to the complex medical pro- uh, mathematical problem. Our son provided the answer, and he provided the correct answer, but refused to show his work. When questioned as to why he did not follow instructions and demonstrate the knowledge of the mac- mathematical solution, his answer was, cuz, C-U-Z. Because why? Cuz I knew the answer. I didn't want to waste time showing how I got there. An interesting approach to a mathematical question. The answer is cuz, cuz I know the answer. Can you imagine if our answer to do you know God exists was cuz? Cuz I know God exists, God exists. Simple and straightforward, just like the math question. But not helpful for someone trying to understand God, nor to be honest, is it helpful for ourselves in building our faith and understanding the complexities of the mystery of God. So how do we answer that question? How do we know that God exists? Today we use scripture to guide the exploration of that question. And before we dive deeper into that scripture, I want to remind us of the value of the ancient scripture. Scripture written thousands of years ago that can illuminate the challenges we face today. The stories and wisdom within scripture can display and uncover the mysteries of the God that we all know. However, as we do know, the lessons are frequently not obvious, and we need interpretation of the scripture, time to reflect and debate, and often discuss with others. If the lessons in the scripture were obvious to us, we are likely not interpreting the scripture correctly. Each story, poem, And song within scripture has deep meaning, and often multiple meanings. We continue to learn and discover as we explore the stories that we find in scripture. Even after a lifetime of interacting with the Bible, God continues to reveal new and refreshing lessons. I know each time I open the Bible, I find something new. Today's scripture is an untitled psalm which is unusual in the Bible, most of our psalms have actual titles. And in following the lectionary, we are looking at only the first nine verses of Psalm 104. The psalm gives us an interpretation to the many voices within nature and sings sweetly both to God's creation and providence. It is a poem, and it contains a complete cosmos, sea and land, cloud and sunlight, plant and animal, light and darkness, life and death, are all proved to be expressive in the presence of the Lord. When a scripture is as complex as poetry, it can be helpful to read the scripture from different translations. The message is a translation of the Bible in contemporary language. In Psalm 104, in the message says, O my soul, bless God. God, my God, how great you are, beautifully, gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine, and all heaven stretched out for your tent. You built your palace on the ocean's deep, made a chariot out of the clouds, and took off on winged wings. 
You commandeered win winds as messengers, appointed fire and flame as ambassadors. You set earth on a firm foundation so that nothing can shake it ever. You blanketed the earth with ocean, covered the mountains and deep with deep waters. Then you roared and the waters ran away. Your thunder crashed, put it to flight. Mountains pushed up, valleys spread out in the places you assigned them. You set boundaries between earth and sea. Never again will earth be flooded. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. It's repeated three times in the previous psalm. And this phrase calls us to worship God in spirit and in truth and to do so from our innermost being. The psalmist worshiped Yahweh as their God. And as the great one who is clothed with honor and majesty, the idol gods of the nations were often described as crude and shameful with their conduct, but Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel, is known for honor and majesty. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Verse 1 of Psalm 104 sums the whole creative act in one grand thought. In that act, the invisible God has exhibited God's self in splendor and glory making visible all that God is, the deepest meaning of creation. The universe is the garment of God. If verse 1 of Psalm 104 sums all that God is, sums up all that God is, maybe we can use this psalm to begin to answer the question, how do I know God exists? The pandemic has had a variety of negative impacts on each of us and society as a whole. And we can quickly name many undesirable outcomes and we can quickly dwell upon the destructive themes. However, there have been a number of positive outcomes. One important outcome has been the increased desire and drive for humans to be in the outdoors. We live in a culture of entertainment. We like to be entertained, sports, concerts, social gatherings, and we like to be with each other. It brings us joy. We're social beings. The pandemic has deeply affected and continues to affect our capacity to gather. With this form of entertainment taken away, what do we do? Well, this has been where it gets interesting and where our connection with God and Psalm 104 is illuminated. It appears that humans are flocking to nature like no other time in history. For example, in the 12 months leading up to May 2021, sales of kayaks grew 30%. Backpacking tents are up almost 50%, and sleeping bags are up 20%. And the list of products and categories that are, exp of products and categories that are exploding goes on and on. Sales of products don't normally grow by this much, but the pandemic in changing people's habits has dramatically changed our interest in the outdoors. The pandemic has rearranged people's thinking about going outdoors. Visiting national parks is up, are up 74%, and good luck trying to find a bicycle. Shells are empty and manufacturers cannot keep up with the demand. You may be asking yourself, how does this relate to God and what on earth does an economic impact have to do with scripture? The psalmist understood the, that God was the creator of all things, and that it was God who laid the foundation of the earth. It did not happen by chance or random events. There is a creator behind all things. God is part of all living things. God's presence is evident in the living things of this earth. We understand that God is present within each of us, and we interact with others. God becomes obvious in our actions and care for others. Likewise, God is present in the living forest, the flowers, and the animals. The life within their branches and the legs on the animals is God-given and God-infused. So you may be wondering, is she telling me that trees have the capacity to interact with God? No. Our ability to interact and understand God is based on our intellectual ability. Humans have brain capacity to interact and understand God and trees do not. However, what I am saying is that all living beings are infused with God 
and represent God in the world. God is present in the world. And the psalmist sings of that glory. O oh, my soul, bless God. God, my God, how great you are. Beautifully, gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine, and all heaven stretched out for your tent. One does not need to spend very long in nature to know that the wind whistles, the leaves whisper, and the birds sing. The forest speaks. God intended us to be stunned and awed by God's work of creation. But not for its own sake. God means for us to look at creation and say, if the work of God's hand is so full of wisdom, power, grandeur, mastery, and beauty, what must this God be like? For many individuals, the beautiful forest songs may be non-existent, silenced by industrial noise or cityscape, often unavailable to them, not easily acceptable, ex accessible. But we, the people of East Pandem Camden Pastoral Charge, are blessed to live in a rural setting where the symphony of nature is available by simply opening our window, turning off our electronics, and listening, breathing in God's song. God is present in all that surrounds us. This reality is a story worth telling, and one of many stories that will provide insight into the question of how do we know God exists? We have all heard that nature has healing qualities, and many studies have shown that spending time in nature actually lowers our stress and increases our well-being. Specific research from the University of Michigan even proves that time spent in the forest can boost our memory and our mood. The good news is that there is no need to travel to exotic locales. Even if you find yourself in a small slice of nature, all you have to do is pay attention to the beauty surrounding you and you can experience what is called ulesa. Ulesa is a sand script term that describes the feeling of pleasantness evoked by natural beauty. We experience it when we notice the way light sneaks under the hem of a curtain in the early hours of the morning, or the shifting chorus of bird songs as our seasons change. We grow ulesa by noticing the sounds of crackling leaves underfoot, the magic of new buds on maple trees, and the glimmering of snow on the sunlight. This awareness of the natural beauty, God's beauty, has an uplifting power. It can quiet our mind, calm anxiety, and stir a reverence for the complexity and mystery of God. Like the breath, Beauty is ever-present. We just need to awaken to it. Turn our attention to the beauty of the environment and open up to Ulesa. At some point, the natural beauty, God's beauty, becomes enough for us. I started this message by asking the question, how do you know God exists? I believe we find a common ground and common experience when we look at the mysteries of God illuminated in Scripture. Psalm 104 reminds us of the reality of God in created nature. Our stories, like those of the Bible, illuminate to others and to ourselves the existence of God. God exists because we know God exists. Reflecting on that knowing and being able to tell of our experience enriches our faith and begins to illuminate for others how we have come to know and experience God. Today's scripture concludes it all. O oh, my soul, bless God. God, my God, how great you are, beautifully, gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine, and all heaven stretched out for your tent. You build your palace on the ocean's deep made a chariot out of clouds, and took off on wind wings. You commandeered winds as messengers, appointed fire and flame as ambassadors. You set earth on a firm foundation so that nothing can shake it ever.
Amen. Him, Voices United 147, what wondrous love is this? invitation to offering. God of great blessing, but even greater lessons, remind us again who gives life and who receives it. Sometimes, like Job, we need to have our questioning answered with a lesson. We need to learn that we are not the ones in charge of the universe. The gifts we bring this morning are not a down payment toward future favor, but a token of debt we will never be able to repay. May we gain wisdom in giving, and may these gifts be blessed for your glory, not ours. In Christ we pray. Amen. Let's join together in the dedication of our tithes and offering. Gracious and holy God, accept what we offer today our checks and cash, our followers and steps, our brokenness, our lovers, our hope, our risky, our lives. Bless and transform all that we are. And all that we hold back, that new life may be ours to celebrate and share in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of the people. Let us pray. Glorious God, we are so competitive. We want to know who will be best and first. We hope that is each one of us. You call us special, and we interpret that to mean the best. We feel that we are entitled to all that is due to the best. Jesus remind us that the best of us will be servants will be those who are willing to help and witness to others, not for our own honor, but for honor and praise. Far too long we have decided that we know what is best for the world. We want to run the whole show, 
but we don't want to listen to you, God. We want us to bring peace, to listen to others' needs and wants. We want to impose our wills on everyone. We have gotten way off track of discipleship. Bring us back, patient God. Shake the dust off the arrogance and nourish us with humility and joy. Help us to be the kind of disciples that serve you faithfully. Lord, we pray for our community. We name those silently or aloud her in specific need of prayer. Glorious God, we ask for a special touch. Please provide light for those who are experiencing darkness. Courage for those consumed with fear. Hope where lives are in despair. Peace for days that are filled with turmoil. We pray for joy to replace those who are experiencing sorrow. Strength when weakness is all that we know. Wisdom to replace our confusion and forgiveness of sin. Tenderness when we want to be tough. Love to replace hate. And you, God, only you to replace our selfishness. We ask all these things and pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Voices United 5, 6, 7, will you come and follow me? sing within our hearts, although we can't sing aloud. So friends, as you leave this place, may the scripture in 104 resonate in your heart, and may the breath that you feel within nature 
be God's breath upon you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen.